Hi there, uh, this is Timothy Dolan uh, speaking from you from Dohak, uh, Kurdistan region of northern Iraq. And uh, today I'm going to kind of carry on with uh, what I feel uh, are the stories that uh, might help humanize the region. Uh, we have these general kind of amorphous, uh, often uh, misleading impressions about uh, a region such as northern Iraq and uh, the Kurdistan region generally. Um, I think most people know really next to nothing about the area. So uh, what some of us might know is that uh, the Kurdish forces were allied with the United States and have uh, some support uh, in the fight against ISIS and uh, we may not know much more than that. Um, we may have conveniently forgotten that in uh, Iraq War I, then George Herbert Walker Bush had uh, made statements encouraging an uprising against Saddam Hussein, which uh, at that time had been defeated in the Kuwait War, but had remained in power. Uh, the Kurds, um, who had been oppressed under Saddam Hussein, and rather brutally so, uh, did in fact that exact thing. They uh, rose up against Saddam Hussein, who was a weakened Iraqi government. Uh, however, they did not gain American support in their uprising, and uh, their uh, efforts were put down, put down brutally, and uh, one could count that as a betrayal uh, of, of Americans who had misled the, Kur the Kurds into thinking they were going to gain uh, American military support. That did not happen. Now fast forward, uh, 2014, the expansion of ISIS into uh, both Iraq, Syria, and uh, posing a true, a true threat uh, to the Baghdad government. Uh, the Peshmerga, the, uh, Kuwait, uh, the Kurdish forces, uh, were the one portion of this um, opposition to ISIS that did not fold, that did not melt away. The Iraqi army uh, fled, leaving their equipment and leaving huge amounts of money behind and uh, um, an oil infrastructure that ISIS had uh, been able to exploit and sustain itself through. Uh, so it was a disaster all around. Uh, so let's finally get to the story and kind of personalize things. Uh, enough with this kind of general world games. Okay, sorry for that interruption. Uh, these things happen. Uh, so it was a good break because I do want to get to a specific case, and that is a uh, person who um, I work with. Um, I'm not going to name names. I uh, never got permission. It's a secondhand story as well, but I think it's representative of the people. Uh, this particular individual uh, was a young man who is, uh, like many people in Kurdistan, uh, not necessarily uh, with a great deal of ambition, frankly, or direction. Um, he encountered somebody passing out applications uh, to attend the American University in Kurdistan. And uh, he picked up the flyer and filled the thing out and turned it in. And to his surprise, uh, weeks later, he got a letter of acceptance to the university, which uh, was a big deal, as you can imagine. Uh, so with some excitement, he went to his father and uh, gave him the news. However, the father, uh, again, typical of people in Kurdistan, uh, really couldn't afford the tuition. Uh, the American University in Kurdistan is not cheap, and it's not subsidized uh, to any great extent. Uh, so it was a case of the father just saying to the son, I'm very, very sorry, but really we can't afford this. And uh, then the, uh, the war broke out, uh, that is against ISIS. The father joined the Peshmerga, uh, he was not a high-ranking officer, but he uh, was, in this particular instance, uh, on the scene where uh, a, an attack took place. 
the attack uh, was known. Uh, intelligence knew an attack was coming. Uh, they had a good idea of the time and uh, maybe the, even the means. However, uh, in spite of all that, the attack succeeded. A car bomb came up through um, an area uh, and killed 35 Peshmerga, including several high-ranking leadership people and uh, this individual's father. Uh, now things changed because of his father's death. He qualified for a state subsidy, a compensation, which would allow him to go to university, uh, which I thought was actually great. I mean, not the circumstances, but the fact that there's this sort of compensation available here. So this individual is now um, a member of our university and uh, he's performing. Uh, not the best, but uh, that's okay. Uh, he has a future, I believe. Uh, we'll see where all this goes. But uh, again, I just wanted to kind of give you a glimpse about uh, life in Kurdistan. It's not a violent place. Uh, it has been wrecked by war. Uh, this is the region where these things happen. The war is a symptom of things that are much larger. As one uh, speaker, a, an ambassador uh, to the region, uh, put it that Kurdistan is in a bad neighborhood. Uh, it's stuck between Turkey and it's stuck between Iraq. Uh, the Kurds are not Arab, nor are they Turks. Uh, they are, if anything, linguistically connected to Iran, that is Persia, but uh, they don't practice uh, Shiite Islam. So uh, that doesn't really work uh, as a connecting point for the Kurds either. Anyway, uh, we're drifting back towards geopolitics. I just really wanted to focus on the story of this young man and the circumstances that led him to be a student at the American University of Kurdistan. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you found it of interest. Okay, bye-bye now. Tim Dolan, signing off.